Ladies and gentlemen, Armor Gun here with a crazy cool gun to talk to you guys more about. This is the Cero GM6 Lynx 50 BMG Bullpup semi-automatic rifle. This thing is as crazy awesome as it looks. I'm going to tell you about it. I've had this thing for about three years now. have shot a couple hundred rounds through it and I mean it's not a we're not talking grand thumb numbers through a gun here but I pay for my guns and my ammo at this point so uh and we're talking 50 BMG so it's still 200 rounds is quite a lot and we're going to roll in a bunch of previous shooting clips from previous videos so we'll do that right now. Well shit. Holy shit. One more. Oh man. She's raining. Here we go. And now that I've got you guys all uh, nice and, uh, yeah. Now we'll get into it. We'll go through the features, the specs. I'll talk about some accessories. I'll talk about where you guys can get this thing because uh, part of the reason I'm doing this video is due to the renewal of interest in this thing over the last couple weeks. Some big videos came out talking about this thing, discussing its increased availability stateside now, which is really, really friggin' cool. And I thought, let's do a video on it. I've got a decent amount of experience with it. I've had it for a long time use it in a number of scenarios and I uh, thought, you know what, let's just do it. So also I've been dying a little bit inside with all the renewed interest in my old cringy videos of this thing in which I rambled aimlessly and too fast uh, on these guns. So I thought I would take a fresh perspective and give you guys my thoughts. I've done a lot of shooting of this thing over the past year as well. So my opinion is much more formed at this point. And I felt I could give you guys a fresh, a fresh take with a little more production value and some wicked cool backgrounds. I, uh, if you want to see some of the other videos I've done that have been relatively popular recently, I did some ultimate gun room videos, talk about the safe, talk about setting up the whole room using the tool chest for gun storage. And we're going to have one on the Galotech wall system here pretty soon as well. But uh, otherwise, let's get into this thing without actually getting right into it because I do still have a full disassembly and reassembly video on this thing. And I don't really want to rehash all that. So you just have to bear with the cringe on that one if you really want to get technical. All right, let's grab this thing, get it on the table, and uh, go from there. So this thing's kind of a beast. Oh, I am holding it in one hand. She is hot. Let's try and do this a little more freehand. But it isn't actually that bad, given the fact that it's a 50. It weighs 11.3 kilos or 24.91 pounds for you American beauties. Speaking of beauties, this thing is just the sexiest 50 I've ever laid eyes upon. I suppose sexy is subjective, but this thing really is a beaut and she can shoot as well. Anecdotally, I have one three round group at hundred meters with one MOA accuracy. There's been some wild claims that this thing has been quite inaccurate, but that is unfortunately it's the only the claim I have, I don't have the target. That was just when we were sighting it in with a Schmidt und Bender prior to taking this thing out to a mile, which we did. However, it was short lived because then a dude showed up to the uh, gravel pit we were shooting at and we decided to pack it in for the night and haven't had another opportunity to take it out, at least that far. I am fighting some bureaucratic at the moment, but soon I will be through that and we'll be able to shoot this thing again. And at that time, we will run through some more loadings. The one MOA group I got with this 750 grain Hornady Amax. We're gonna run some other loadings through it as well to give you guys a more comprehensive view of this thing's, what this thing's capable of. And we'll do some, uh, probably some five round groups as well, not just three round groups. So that'll be all to come. But uh, otherwise, let's uh, get into the rest of the specs and then we'll touch on the features and then we'll get into, we'll get into the good stuff. What this thing is actually to shoot and what I think of it. So specs wise, I give you guys the weight. This thing is about 44 inches from butt to tip, haha. -ha. And collapsed, it is 36 inches and one quarter, 36.25 inches. And this time I'll make the, uh, the metric folk do the conversion. Anyways, it's also chambered in 50 BMG, a couple other sizes for your relative comparisons here. We have the 338 Lapua Magnum and the 308 Winchester. So there you go for size. This thing is a beautiful big bastard and I do enjoy shooting it very much 
for reasons that we'll get into very shortly. The GM6 Lynx is fed by a single stack, five round magazine, though I believe a six slash seven is also available. And uh, a few Americans keep a bug in Cero for those larger capacity magazines. They just might do a 10 rounder. I'm thinking they'll, it's gonna be expected because they're, they're competing with the Barrett 107 in the States and that's got a 10 rounder. So probably gonna try and uh, try and match that. There's also a 12.8 by 108, 12.7 by 108 Russian conversion kit available for these things. So that's also pretty neat. Fundamentally, one of the coolest aspects of the GM6 Lynx is that it employs a long recoil action. And what I mean by that is the barrel reciprocates the entire stroke of the bolt. So actually the way this works, and a Barrett does something similar, but a Barrett is more of a short recoil action. When you see the Barrett 107 or 82 being shot, you'll see the barrel just reciprocates something like three quarters of an inch or something. Watch one of those videos, you'll see uh, what I'm talking about. But that short stroke imparts energy onto the carrier, cycles the action, you know, job's a good one. This thing, however, the barrel stays connected to the bolt the entire stroke. And the way the barrel and bolt connect or interact is it's actually a rotating bolt. And the bolt itself looks, it's a multi-lug bolt. It looks something like an AR-15 bolt, which is really cool. I'll show you guys a little clip of it right here. But ultimately, if you guys wanna see this thing in detail, again, in my disassembly video, I break this thing completely apart, the bolt all the way down to the last springs. So you guys can check that out there. But essentially that's how it works. About a 45 degree throw and then it unlocks and then you can separate the bolt from the barrel, though both of them ride on an internal rail system in here. And guys, don't worry, I'm not gonna nerd out too much. I'm just gonna show you kind of how this operating system works and how it's relative to other things. And that's gonna be pretty much it for the, for the features. I'll show you guys the bipod as well, but then we're gonna get into what this thing is like to shoot. So I'm just gonna demonstrate the way this works here. So as I'm pushing the barrel back, you'll see the roller interacts with the rear of the receiver here. And that naturally forces the barrel and the bolt, well, forces the bolt to disengage with the barrel. Once we get all the way to the back, they disengage and the bolt remains at the rear. The barrel is free to travel forward, which uh, is necessary because at this point, um, this is gonna pop out the, the 50 round, the 50 BMG, the casing that's still there that has just been shot, presumably. Once the barrel seats home in the receiver, that's gonna unlock the bolt. The bolt's gonna fly forward stripping a round of 50 BMG off the top of the magazine, chambering it, relocking itself, and you're basically at that point good to go. So I'll show you that really here quickly. And now I'll show you that again in slow motion. Super friggin' cool and very, very practical. So when this thing is uh, fully collapsed, it's got a little tab up here that I can uh, push closed, and then there's a button here that retains it and releases it. So there's a little clasp that catches around the, uh, the rim of that barrel there. You push it down, it locks in. The button here then, you just press the button and it pops back up. So I'll show that. So they were, they were engaged. And then boom, she's open. So the cool thing is, you can be in a vehicle with the, the barrel retained. You can throw a full magazine in and you can put the safety on, whatever, actually the safety's on now and jump out of your vehicle. So your, your collapse is basically a three foot long rifle, which is, you know, not bad for being in a, in a passenger seat of a vehicle. Pull up to the destination, crank open that door, run out, hit that button. You're, you're hot and ready to go with a 50 BMG in a, probably one of the most demand portable and shoot short, shoulder fireable 50 BMGs out there. This thing is crazy. Cool. Well, we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> The next couple of points I wanna drive home are just how this is a little bit different from a traditional operating system or the short stroke that the Barrett uses and also some really interesting aspects of this thing being shot suppressed. Because yes, they make a suppressor for, the Cero does, and I really wanna get one into play with because I think it'd be super fascinating to run a suppressor with this system. And I'll tell you that in a second here. So again, I explained the short recoil operation that the Barrett uses and in a traditional system, something like um, say the Serbu, for example, which is also an awesome gun. I used to own one of those. It was a lot of fun to shoot. But in a traditional system like that, the barrel is fixed and you're relying on bleeding off gas pressure to cycle the action. So the barrel is gonna be drilled and tapped. You have a little gas block on there and that gas block is either gonna interact with a piston to then impart you know, force onto the carrier or it's gonna be a gas tube that's gonna take it all the way back to the carrier itself like in a DI AR-15 and that's gonna cycle the action. 
Both of those are typically faster than a long recoil action in terms of cycling, but they do involve tapping the barrel to bleed off that excess pressure um, that's built up by the bullet prior to it exiting the barrel. And you can have other problems like, you know, chamber pop when uh, you're running suppressed, the action cycles more quickly, or you're just directing hot carbon laden gases right back into the action. So there's a couple, a couple trade offs there. It's really cool and fascinating that this barrel has zero extra holes drilled into it. There's, there's a hole for a bullet to go in, a hole for a bullet to go out, and that's it. So now shooting this thing suppressed is why I'm super interested because you would have the bullet fully exit the barrel. That's when you get the recoil impulse that's driving this thing back. And again, the action is remaining sealed the entire time. The bullet is long left the barrel by the time this action opens up and any except well, at that point in time your chamber pressure is going to be probably next to nothing so you're not gonna have much excess gases blown out this thing is almost functioning like a bolt action gun except through the whole course of this thing cycling back and forth you're soaking up a ton of recoil or at least you're dissipating that recoil well the the, the spring system is absorbing some of it but you're, you're experiencing that as the shooter through the uh, big rubber butt pad here um, over a longer period of time. And therefore it feels like a big push. It doesn't just like a, uh, kind of like that, right? So some big dude walks up to you in your locker and just gives you, uh, right? It's not like a jab or a punch or anything. Like and that's pretty dang sick. Now this thing also comes standard with a built-in bipod. You uh, push the little lever, this flips up, push this little lever and that flips up and then you spin this whole thing down and it locks in place at the 90 degree mark. So no, you can't really swivel it much. It doesn't have any other built-in like flex or sway or pivot, but you can adjust the length of the legs. A couple, a couple different lengths anyways. So it's not super, you know, adjustable. You can basically just take these feet off and then throw a, an AccuTac on there because AccuTacs are freaking awesome. Um, but it's still pretty cool and it's, I think it's pretty robust. And it does tuck in and look pretty dang sexy when it's there. You've got a pretty heck and large trigger guard, no problems at all getting a big nasty glove in there. Thumb hole stock actually isn't too bad. They've actually contoured the grip so that you can, you can actually get around it. And it's actually quite comfortable. And maybe even California, I don't know if this is California, I don't even know what's California compliant anymore. Their laws are actually worse than mine, I think. But you've got a big massive cross block safety. It's got a little red, you're dead on the other side, and uh, white on the safe side. Let's give this trigger a bit of a pull here. It's pretty atrocious, I'll uh, just forewarn you. But there's your big exposed firing pin. Here's your hammer, it kind of swings over from the side. Let's just uh, pull this thing here in uh, typical Garantham fashion. He's seemingly patented this uh, technique. So we'll, uh, we'll get there, we got your first wall, and then there's just a bunch of mush. And then it just kind of, kind of breaks. And it's, it's not like it's a hard pull, it is long. And again, there's that hammer. Manually reset it. And there we go again. Yeah, it's, I mean, for a 50, it's not a predictable trigger, which for a 50, you kind of like a predictable trigger. I would much rather have a better trigger in this thing. It's not horrible. It's not a heavy pull, so that's nice at least. You just, you kind of just start pulling. And I guess the other thing is, when you're pulling it, you can work out a lot of that initial pre-travel. It doesn't come back. Once you've pulled it out, it's like, there's your new wall. <laughs> Scared myself there a little bit, but that's kind of how it works. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, I'm not a huge fan. It's also got this kind of funky dust cover. I'm kind of going through my, my negatives with this gun right now. The dust cover is kind of, I don't know. I don't know how much dust it's gonna keep out of the system. It's pretty open. You can take it off if you really wanted to. I've had lots of people comment on that being stupid, but it does automatically open up when you do this, but you also get a nice little mark in there. I don't know, it is what it is. The gun disassembles back here. You just uh, spin this little guy off and then you can hinge open the receiver. And that's kind of the starting of the, uh, the disassembly process is literally this thing hinges apart, which is, it's interesting. The disassembly process isn't crazy on this thing. Um, it doesn't take too long to get the gun completely broken down. The bolt can be a little bit of a beast, but uh, again, I go through all that with you. So you don't have to worry on the poorly translated instructions on doing that. Guys, I'm gonna cap her there for the reviews and specs portion of this video. If you want more in-depth knowledge of this thing, you can listen to me ramble about it in my other video. You have my advanced sympathies. However, we're gonna get on to, I guess, the review portion of this thing now. Kind of what I've thought of this thing over the last 200 rounds and three years of owning it.
No, 200 rounds isn't a crazy amount of experience. Definitely not the grand thumb, you know, prestige of being like, oh, I've got 6,000 rounds through this rifle. But keep in mind, I don't have those big daddy bucks behind me just yet, nor all that Patreon support or the sponsored ammo. Though, Jason, if you want to throw some 50 BMG my way, I will gladly run some more rounds through this thing on your behalf. Side note, Jason with uh, Sarah USA, bringing these big bad boys in for the United States market. Hit him up if your pennies have been multiplying rapidly like mine did once upon a time and buy yourself your own Sarah GM6 links, at least if you still want one after you hear what I have to say about it. And Mike, if or when, or definitely when, when you're watching this, which you undoubtedly will when Jason uh, gives you one of these in probably like 5,000 rounds of 50 BMG, so you can just flex on us with your superior GM6 knowledge. I'm sure you will still check out this video to get my impressions on it because I'm the only other crazy bastard that spent enough money on one of these things and actually does YouTube. So at such a time, deuces brother. And I do think at the next time we're both at SHOT Show, we should like go in on a couple uh, flannels that say like Flannel Daddy 1 and Flannel Daddy 2. I won't even fight you for the number one. I will gladly play second fiddle to number one Flannel Daddy. But that's another joke for another time. And uh, I'm just gonna say that we've already talked about the trigger pull, TM Grand Thumb, which was pretty awful. We've talked about the anecdotal accuracy, which again, I had one, one MOA group with the three group round group with the Hornady AMAX. We will do a follow-up video with more of that. So the GM6 Lynx, it's made by Cero in Hungary. So it's Hungarian made. Now, some of you guys might think, well, maybe what's the quality like out of Hungary? I wasn't sure when I, you know, jumped on this thing either. There was very few of these things around. This was three years ago, so they were even less known about. But I still thought this was probably like the coolest gun I could ever get my hands on. I was like, you know what? My pennies, they've been scratching together for a while. I'm just gonna, you know, bite the bullet and go for it. And uh, thank you to Nick at uh, Tactical Imports who did a layaway plan for me, brought this thing in. I got it and I still remember as I pulled this thing out of the box, I was immediately blown away by the level of fit and finish, the quality that this gun just felt and embodied as soon as I pulled it out of the box. Again, the finish is super well, everything fit really nicely. I got an even better appreciation for that as I pulled it apart because internally, again, that fit and finish carries throughout the gun. So a big kudos there. They did a fantastic job. And again, Cero does operate out of a, you know, state-of-the-art facility. Now, Cero hasn't contacted me directly. I've never talked to them directly. I don't even know if they know who I am. I mean, I kind of hope they do because I have put out quite a bit of video on this thing, apart from myself and the manufacturer, there isn't really much out there, at least in English. So I, I kind of hope they know who I am. And I, if they've seen this, you guys like me, definitely please send me a suppressor because that would be just the bomb and I will, uh, I will definitely use it if you do. But otherwise, yeah, full transparency, all that mumbo jumbo, there's nothing. I bought this gun because I thought it was super cool. I had my reservation, kind of holding my breath when I got it, but then was super impressed with the fit and finish. Again, inside and out, and then I shot the thing. And guys, shooting this thing is an experience that I hope you all get to one day have. Because having shot other 50s, from semi-automatics to bolt actions, this thing, A, as the shooter, you don't perceive, at least I didn't perceive the concussion nearly as much. And I felt that shooting other 50s. Further, that recoil impulse is just so interesting. It's because it's 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 sluggish. This wouldn't be as fast as shooting as something like a Barrett, for say, because the, the whole action has to cycle. But there are benefits to that system as well. And again, you're getting this recoil spread out over such a long period of time that really just does feel like a push as opposed to a sharp jab or punch. And that really aids in its shootability from the shoulder. Also being a bullpup, you have way better balance. So much of the, the internal weight is balanced kind of around here, so you carry a lot of it between your, your grip and your shoulder, which just allows you to hold that and balance that and actually get a decent shot placement um, just from the shoulder, which again is super impressive. To the best of my recollection, I've only had one malfunction with this thing, and that was early on, probably the first 30 rounds or so. After that, I cleaned it. It was a failure to extract, and after that, I cleaned it and have had no other problems with it to the rest, again, to my recollection since. And it's been quite a few rounds. I haven't cleaned it recently. At least it's been at least a hundred rounds since I've cleaned it last. And it is still looking super clean, which uh, I'm really impressed with. I think that's partly because of the fact that the action stays closed until it's sealed and the chamber pressure is really low. So you're not kicking out a bunch of crap back into the action uh, that's coming down, you know, obviously the barrel. So cool stuff. 
There's also a rumor that problems pop up with these things after 400 rounds, which is a little nefarious because hardly anyone shoots these things. Even myself, who shot this thing quite a bit, I've only gotten about halfway there. So I've heard that that's likely a rumor just started to discredit this thing. Um, I can't really tell for sure. Probably will find out from Mike because he'll uh, get all the rounds and he'll he'll find a way to break this thing if there is a way to break it. The barrel is supposed to be good for 5,000 rounds of 50 BMG until it uh, degrades. That's what I've heard again, Lothar Walther barrels. And anecdotally, people have been concerned about this rear spring back here. I will uh, flip this gun around and show you. And we're gonna demonstrate why at least it may or may not be an issue. It's this guy right back here, part of the disassembly process. There's this recoil spring. So this is the spring that's behind the bolt. The barrel has its own spring, which again, you can see in my other video. Let's pop this out. So this is in there and guys are like, oh, if this pops up, you know, and the bolt reciprocates, it's gonna drive this right through your shoulder, which is kind of scary. So let's take a quick look at this and uh, see what we think. To simulate this, I'll just put the barrel down like so, you guys can see uh, the spring is out right now and that allows it to pop part way down. However, if it's a, it'll kind of catch if it's at this point and then it's gonna wanna stay. It's gonna kind of lock up the gun a bit. The best way I found to try this is actually to put my hand or my thumb over it and then start pushing the gun down. Pressure builds up behind it. And you can see I'm basically bottomed out right now and it hasn't like blasted my finger off. So it's even just staying there. I don't think this is a uh, potential impaling hazard. At least from what I can tell here, I'm not gonna put this against my shoulder and shoot it. I'm not gonna go that far. We can maybe do some demo ranch style testing of this in front of a watermelon or something at some point in time, uh, but uh, at least not today. And I, I don't think it's an issue. So again, it pops up, but with not that much pressure, not enough that's gonna impale your shoulder, at least in my opinion. So we're gonna go with that. And guys in uh, Ferris Bueller's famous words, if you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. Also, my dudes, there are accessories, including this GM6 Tactical Go Bag for this thing, where you can literally stick the GM6 links right inside and uh, rock and roll with it. So that's pretty cool. I got a video out on this bag going all the way through that. There's also a cool kind of skeleton system scope case cover that can protect your optic and you can kind of carry off of it. So there's that as well. It comes with uh, some pretty hefty scope rings are right out of the box with it, at least mine did. You can get longer barrels yet. And again, as I mentioned earlier, there's also those 12.7 by 108 Russian conversion kits. For the guy that not only needs the exotic semi-auto 50, but also in an exotic caliber. Also, quick thank you to Tom at Go Big Tactical for uh, the hookup with ZCO. This is their 4x20 optic. It's a fantastic piece of glass. I do recommend you guys checking this out. If you guys are in PRS, check out their new Impact 3 reticle. Kind of blew my mind. I'm gonna be doing some content on that thing soon. The Impact 3 being the one that is currently on my AWSM. Oh, she is a beauty. We're gonna shoot some more at this thing soon as well because it's been just too long. Now, this video wouldn't be quite complete without a point of view look at this thing. So here you guys go. There's the uh, GM6 Lynx kind of video game style. We can uh, press that barrel in like so, and then pop this retaining clip down. And that's, uh, man, the balance is so well. With the weight further, the further back in the dad, oh, it just it just runs so well. Let's pop that guy out. Take a quick shot. Now as a final shout out to my good buddy, Richard, who has uh, helped me out in a lot of ways. We're gonna repay at least one of those favors by, if you haven't guessed it by this point, I can't help you. I'm gonna throw a carry handle on this thing because I'm pretty sure that's never been done before. So Guinness, I'm waiting, I'm here. We got a carry handle on the GM6 links. You know what, I need to, we need to, we need to finish this look. Yep, there we go. Oh, this had to be done, Richard. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh, too cool. Struggling slightly. Oh man, look at this. Look at that. That is, that is 
That's how we do it. Oh. Yep, that might. This needs to. This needs to go on the gram now. That's. That's gonna happen. Tune in next time because I will throw an HK carry handle on it as well because I think that would actually. That would kind of work. That would actually look pretty cool. Anyways, that's it for tonight, guys. Thanks a ton. Hit up Richard because the more people that follow him, the more cool guns he sends me to play with. He's got all the guns. Literally a pile of P90s suppressed on the floor. It just, it boggles my mind and I cry at night about it. <clears throat> guys, that's really it. If you like my content, I got five things for you. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram right down there. I post cool crap like this daily as well as lots of behind the scenes stuff of the uh, gun room, occasionally my uh, cat who wants to go outside and murder something, and just in general, a good time. Ooh. We'll talk about that soon. By the way, we have a bonus gun as we usually do. This time, something a little extra special, which we're gonna hopefully play with soon, courtesy of Wolverine Supplies, the great folks over there have uh, helped support me and what I'm doing here. And thanks to another local company that is actually licensed for this stuff. I'm not, not personally anyways, um, but a company locally with the licensing is able to have the stuff transferred to them from good folks like Wolverine Supplies. And again, our buddies at Movie Armaments Group, Richard, Charles Chandler. But uh, with their support, we get to have cool stuff come in and then that local company facilitates my use of it for the content. So super cool and a ton of fun stuff like this on the way. MP7 coming soon. We're going to carry handle it along with some P90s. Thanks a ton, guys. Arm and gun out.